There are very few people who will say eating is not important to them. Cooking and eating is like probably my favorite thing to do. If I was sitting in a hospital room at 7.30 a.m. and somebody comes and knocks on my door and wants to watch me eat breakfast, I mean, I would probably be kind of irritated. So I go in, I'm like super smiley. I say, hi, my name is Faith. I'm a speech and swallowing therapist. And when you're in the hospital, you're already in a situation that you don't want to be in. Um, you don't feel good. You're getting poked and prodded all the time. These situations can be very intense. It's like night and day. They lose a lot of their um, independence. For me, one of the things I love most about speech therapy, um, specifically working with people with swallowing disorders, is that so many things have to be in order for your swallow to work. The slightest thing can kind of throw it all off. The research is constantly changing. There are these new methods to try. There's like an investigative piece towards it. And you have to be a very, um, a person who's interested in details. You have to be a people person, I think. You know, you have to enjoy working with your coworkers and with patients and um, other disciplines. So there are a lot of moving parts to it, and I like all of them. To me, the anatomy and physiology piece is what really gets me. And investigating, and then I love when you see somebody at bedside, and you're giving them things to eat and drink, and you're seeing these things, and you're like, mm, does that mean what I think it means? I don't really know. And then, if appropriate, you can actually figure out by doing an instrumental assessment what I saw at bedside and what I thought was happening was it actually happening. The exciting thing is, is that we have the opportunity to make sure that people are able to eat and drink safely or give them strategies to help them, whereas if we weren't in the hospital, either nobody would be doing it or there wouldn't be somebody skilled and specialized who has the education and training to be able to make it happen. What I get to do every day is go someplace different. And I support individuals across the state of Oregon in every area that they live, work, and play. I get to see them in, in their setting and meet the people in their world and see where their barriers might be. When I develop a communication system for an individual, it can be a one-page support, it can be on an iPad, it can be in a speech generating device. Griffin has taught me many, many lessons. He is a, a remarkable young man who initially, people didn't have a vision that he had the potential that he did. When I first started working with him, he had a very restricted life um, by his own choosing. He loved hanging out in his room, and that's what he did. And I just realized the potential really quickly and offered some additional environmental support. So we got a daily schedule up and it was composed of just pictures that uh, showed him what he, what he got to do that day and um, when he had choices and when he would go to school and when he would eat and just kind of break, broke down his day for him. And he did really well and he loved it and he got out of his room and he started to do more. Now he's working three days a week part-time, he's volunteering, he's, he's got a full, rich life. He goes to the grocery store, he cooks all of his own meals, he does all of his own laundry, he does his chores, he goes, he has a social life. Um, and that was because we had the expectation that he could continue to thrive. A communication system for me is something that provides an individual both and the ability to express what they want, so vocabulary so that they can communicate to, to their world, but also receptively gain information about things. It really is empowering them to understand where they're headed and allowing an individual to start to understand that their future belongs to them and that they get to be a piece, they get to be the driver of that and where they wanna go. When I started the speech-language pathology program, I didn't even know that augmentative and alternative communication, AAC, existed. So I came here and um, discovered so much about AAC and what communication really means. That it's not about um, 
necessarily the words we use or how we pronounce them, but it's more about what is on our minds and hearts and how we communicate those. Hello. Hola. The augmentative and alternative forms of communication are primarily what I focus on. So um, just finding ways in which they can make sure that their message, the content of the message, what they want to say is not lost because they get frustrated and give up. I mean, ultimately, my biggest goal for a family and for a child is to be able to, for them to be able to share the story of themselves. Communication is about getting our needs met and uh, getting our wants met, but it's also about giving our opinions and just to say things like, I love you, or please, thank you. Those are the things that really connect us. And I want to make sure that these children that have complex communication needs are able to have that same opportunity. I put a lot of heart into my work, and so I think the joy comes from that. The joy comes from seeing the look of a child's face when they light up for the first time and being able to communicate something that they haven't in the past, or um, the joy of tears in a parent's eyes because they are able to hear what their child has been trying to communicate or trying to say to them for so long.